Never before in history have doctors been able to do so much to preserve your health as they can today. And almost everywhere in medicine, the parade of advances that will benefit countless millions has just begun. Vaccines became a scientist's dream. They promised to rid the world of viral disease. Curiously, the word vaccine comes from a cow disease called vaccinia. In the 18th century, the beauty of milkmaids was a cliché. They alone seemed to be spared from smallpox. An English country doctor named Edward Jenner observed that a surprising number of milkmaids caught a mild, measles-like illness called cowpox, known officially as vaccinia. Jenner extracted the virus from blisters and infected a child, his own infant son. Then, he inoculated the boy with live smallpox virus. It was shockingly risky, but it worked. The initial cowpox injection did cause mild sickness, but it was enough like smallpox that his body eventually built an immunity to both diseases. We have evolved our own defense mechanisms uh, over the years. We know this is the immune system, which is a very complex system containing many different kinds of cells and functions, uh, whose major purpose, by and large, is to recognize what's foreign and attempt to rub it out. The immune system has three major functions, which are working in your body right now, at this very second. Antibodies are proteins that bind to the surface of a virus, flagging it for death. The body's white cells move in to destroy virus-infected cells. Once you have been infected with a virus, memory cells will immediately recognize it if it enters your body again. This is why vaccines are so effective. The body remembers what the fake virus looks like so it can protect you when the real virus comes along. One of the most common ways to make a vaccine is to grow it in an unnatural host. Chicken embryos are used to grow human viruses like yellow fever, measles, mumps, and influenza. Influenza has been grown on, in eggs for many, many years. It's our standard way of producing virus. It can also be grown in tissue culture and grows very well in tissue culture, but you can't produce enough tissue culture to make large doses required for industrial use. Every year, flu virus is injected into eggs. After several transfers from egg to egg, the virus will have become better adapted to growing in chicken cells than human cells. When injected into a human, it looks enough like the enemy to cause immunity, but isn't strong enough to cause sickness. <laughs> 